Hi everyone and welcome back to another Bork No Game video. Today's video is dedicated to Alchemy Stars. This is going to be an overview on the gotcha. I made a Google spreadsheet. You know I'm dedicated to this, but we have to talk about Proxima Beta, all right? So I did a quick Google search on them because I was told about fraudulent behavior and this is what appeared. Just be aware Proxima Beta is not the most trustworthy company. So before you dump your credit card info, start buying packs and going crazy within the game, just please be aware that this is a thing that they did behind users. They said, Essentially, you know, did some fraudulent charges. So just please be aware if you're a free to play player, you are completely free from like any behavior like this. Just don't dump your money in there within the first couple of days, if not weeks. If you don't care whatsoever, I just wanted to let you know because stuff like this really irks me and I don't normally do this, but if someone lets me know that this occurred, I have to let my audience know. I can't just hype up a game and tell you to play this without, you know, doing my research and then telling you that this is a thing. So now that you know that fraud was pretty much occurring with Proxima Beta. Let's go ahead and jump into the overview because I still feel like this game is worth a try, all right? Now, when it comes to this, this is going to be a beginner guide or sort of introduction to basics to the Alchemy Stars like lore and what's going on in the overall gameplay. Alchemy Stars is a line-based RPG. Some of you are probably wondering what does that entail? When it comes to this, essentially, instead of being a turn-based sort of formation or a tower defense, you're essentially drawing a line and you wanna get as high of a combo as possible because the higher the combo, the more skills that you can essentially proc and extra turn that you can pretty much do. You can essentially gain more buffs. The goal is to get 15 plus or more combo. So you're gonna want like healers, tile converters, there's gonna be detonators and snipers within the game. So you can essentially deal damage and also keep your units alive. We'll talk about it more, but that's a little bit of a gameplay experience right there. When it comes to the story, the introduction of Alchemy Star, you are a Celestite, a Calistite. Hopefully I'm saying that right. And essentially you were wiped out. You're a part of an instinct race where the eclipse site for some unknown reason just decided to kill everyone well that's mostly because you can see light trails which assist them in combat in commanding the orions they have massive ships known as the colossus which is essentially where you are found on so what happens is the clip site wiped out your race you are able to help the orions the reason why the clip site probably wiped you out because they're at war with the orions it's pretty much a world between light and darkness and the light are essentially the orions and the darkness are essentially Eclipsite. It's an interesting story and I like how it's not too generic to the point where you're like some young gun hero. No, you're some dude whose race got wiped out and you're the only one alive and you need to help the Aurorians and hopefully get everything in order to prevent more extinctions from the Eclipsite. All right, knowing that and jumping into the menu and how like everything works, let's jump into the Google spreadsheets. And I pretty much referenced FUBU because he's the one who wrote this. If you're wondering who like did all this information, going to be Pepe, Mufu, and of course FUBU. They're all players that played during the closed beta. So, you know, credits go out to them and I applaud them for pretty much having all this information set out for us. Now, this is going to be like the main menu and the parts that I want us to pay attention to is this is going to be Nitium Gold, all right? This is one of the pre-registration gifts that we got. This is going to be the in-game currency that you'll be using to level up characters, ascend characters, pretty much any action that requires gold or some sort of in-game currency, just refer to it as Nitium, okay? All right, so now that you know what Nitium is, let's go ahead and cover prisms. Prisms are essentially the stamina system so make sure that you're always trying to keep that as low as possible at least in this reference below 75 and loom amber is essentially your premium or your gotcha currency all right so if you go into pre-registration page you can see we had the nitium that we covered earlier and then there's going to be the loom amber which is essentially going to give us the ability to do multis now another thing that we didn't talk about is star flare star flare is another like premium currency you can call this a gotcha ticket just note that you can use it to essentially do summons. So star flares plus loom amber, you get to do more summons, which is pretty cool in my opinion. But I feel like Nitium is going to be a, a very abundant resource from what I can tell because this person has like, you know, roughly 119,000 Nitium or gold, okay? And then there's gonna be a couple of different things appearing in the menu. I explain it again where, you know, the premium currency or the summon currency is loom 
Chrome Amber, and then the Star Flare, right? And the next things being 19M being gold, and then all the little bits about Prism. Now, there are things known as Ascensions and Breakthroughs within the game. If you come from the realm of Arknights, Ascension is essentially Elite 1, where you gather materials and you pretty much level up your characters and you can upgrade your skill, like capabilities, upgrade the characters, you know, maximum levels and all that stuff via Ascension. Now, this is essentially like a free to play way to upgrade your character. All right. And there are guaranteed ways to essentially get drops, which is really cool. A lot more forgiving than other games where drop rates are sort of, you know, they're not guaranteed. So it's really cool that they have this feature where it's like, hey, go here to guarantee drop rate. Just do your thing. All right. Breakthroughs are probably like, you know, the more controversial end, but just note the rates in this game is pretty good. We'll talk about it later. Breakthroughs are essentially your elite twos where you can get more stats. You can get more skill capabilities. Now, as you can see here, like Vice is getting an upgrade to her rapid fire, but just note that she is going to require the Hearthstone, which only can be acquired through like the actual gotcha system. And then when it comes to her actual like shard right here, you need like a dupe and stuff. Just note that this game has really good rates. We keep talking about it. We'll cover it soon. And there's other game modes known as like maze or the labyrinth mode, where it's like the exploration. It's sort of like a roguelike situation. There's going to be towers in the game. There's going to be side stories. And finally, we come to the gotcha, right? So this being a PVE game, there's a lot of different things to do. You're going to be able to ascend characters very quickly because it's going to be, you know, guaranteed on the drop rates and you can pretty much get the materials fast so long as you have the Nitium to afford it. Because as you can see here, it's going to be 40,000. And then when it comes to Hearthstones, you know, you're going to get these from summons and then you do your mazes and your towers and side stories and get to know everyone. Now, the cool thing about the gotcha is that essentially after 50 draws, the rates will go up. I believe this was in Arc Knights as well, where after a certain amount of pulls, the rates will go up. And what happens is the odds of getting a six star Aurorian go up by 1% each attempt until you reach 100% to draw a six star Aurorian. All right. After getting a six star Aurorian, the count will be reset. And just note that the six star Aurorian rate is 2.5 percent five star is 9.5 percent four star 33 percent and three stars being at 54 percent and a couple of recommendations playing like alchemy stars just note that water teams are going to be like the most free to play like element and you ideally want to run a water team just to keep things simple there's going to be three different types of skills there's going to be chain skills there's going to be active slash preemptive skills and there's going to be equipment skills just to break it down really quick chain skills are essentially you know after generating a certain combo where you generate like 18 19 combo then essentially you will trigger a chain skill as said here so that's something to be aware of you want to make sure that you can chain a lot of abilities so you can proc those chain skills and then there's going to be active preemptive skills where essentially once a unit lands you can like kick them and they will cast a skill this is like a manual skill sometimes they pretty much launch a skill as soon as they jump in some preemptive skills work that that way and then there's equipment skills where essentially they are passives so when they are dropped on the field they have like you know a certain amount of overall damage increase defense increase or what have you these are direct effects so they're not like your active or preemptive skills where you have to do something in order to trigger them this is just going to be coming in straight out the gate all right so if anything just note that there's three skills we'll talk about it more later there's going to be different units known as converters or painters they're the ones that can change like the color of the tiles that that's where strategy comes in where you want to change like the actual tile color so that you can get closer to enemies so you can deal more damage so you can have more combos you know there's going to be also units that can be dps where you can be a sniper or there's going to be detonators which are aoe's so just be aware that this game is a little bit different with the way it approaches dps and of course you have your standard healers you know your buffers sort of deal and ideally the team compositions that you want is you know a converter a healer and a DPS. We'll cover it more in the beginner guide on like how to do things. Here are like my personal recommendations. You don't have to go with this. The only reason why I'm picking a bunch of tile converters is because tile converters are pretty universal. And I try to pick ones where they were dual element so that you can have more diversity within your crew. Just note that this game is a heavy advocate for running mono teams. So running like only like forest or green teams or only running like red teams or fire teams, only running water or only running like light or yellow teams all right it's just a thing to be aware of overall i think alchemy stars is a very promising game they give us some multis they give us some free summons they're giving us some gold some gifts all this stuff 
stuff, just please be aware that this is like occurring in the back of your head in case you just want to dump money into it. Just know that's a thing, all right? And then when it comes to everything, there's going to be like shops where you can essentially, you know, get some materials. And I believe you can also pity characters. It's a little bit of a smaller image, but as you can see, you can get shards and characters right there. There's going to be like all the different waifus and husbandos and all the different tiles and stuff. If you want to go in more in-depth detail, we'll cover like a beginner's guide. I'm just excited because there's so many things to cover on this game. There's so many different systems. It's very promising. There's a lot of quality of life. There's a claim all button. That apparently some games don't have. And in conclusion, it's just going to be a fantastic game. I'm going to leave this resource with you as well. It's all within like the Google spreadsheets in like the title section. So in case you want to learn more about the game. And when it comes to this, there's going to be very viable units at three star, very viable units at four star, five star, and so on and so forth. You just need the correct teams. And just something to note is that you don't want to run a mixed team too heavily. You don't want to run just a team of five stars. Or if you do run like a certain team, you want sort of a balanced setup where you have tile converters, you have healers, you have DPS, and then, you know, don't really worry about like the debuff stuff for now. There's so many things that we need to learn as a community before we just jump in and give all the advice. All I know is that tile converters are universal characters for that specific element and that you should be going for those characters and not to mention healers because they have the most utility. Utility is king when it comes to any gotcha. Hopefully you learned something and I'm not just lying to you and just hyping up a game for no reason because that would not be very honest of me to do something like that all right anyways if you made it this far consider subscribing dropping a like leaving a comment follow me on twitch follow me on twitter let me know in the comments if you guys want a beginner's guide and we can cover stuff in more detail i'm so excited to play this game have yourself a good one 25 000 subs giveaways and all that stuff follow me on twitch follow me on twitter have yourself a fantastic day and i will see you in the next one